You ready? Let's get going. So originally I was a little scared of using something along those lines, but when the workshop finally died on me, I got to thinking, okay, what did I want out of a sharpener? And okay, could I tweak a different sharpener or not even a sharpener for that matter to do what I wanted? So the biggest shortcomings of the workshop was, okay, it didn't have a dust collection where this has a port for dust collection. So if I wanted to say, hook up a vacuum or something along those lines, it'll suck up quite a bit of the dust, which not a huge benefit, but at the same time, something that's nice. The other thing was, okay, I didn't want it going straight down because originally it was like that. So it'd be going down. I don't want a knife going straight down and possibly hitting me in my uh, uh, femoral artery, if I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. I forget which one the one's in your leg. But, yeah, so, built the frame, mounted it to the frame, also had to cut out a little hole for the, adjust for the uh, tensioner as well as the adjustment screw. So, just minor things to get it where I wanted it. The other thing was an angle guide, because I like to be able to reference and go, okay, this is 100% 20 degrees, because you get knives every once in a while that somebody's done some weird tweaking to, I just like it as a nice reference point. It's not needed. Ultimately, I can sharpen without it, but at the same time, I like to have it because it's a peace of mind thing for me. So after doing that, I sharpened a knife and was like, okay, what's wrong here? So I have that knife just in general and thought I lost this knife, but I'm very glad I didn't. I thought it got stolen many years ago when my truck got stolen, but... Thankfully, it wasn't in my truck. This is probably one of my favorite knives. I know not very special knife, but at the same time, one of my favorite knives. So, put an edge on this, and mind you, probably one of the cleanest edges I have ever done. I'm, like, unbelievably impressed with the results I get out of this thing. So, put an edge on it, went to go do paper, and it didn't slice. So, I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So, went and took out... There's a level app in your phone, or at least most ones. I have an iPhone. So for me, that was something that I did. So set it on the plate and looked on the side. So it's got gradients for all the different angles. So it's got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So I typically sharpen it about a 20, as you probably already know. So I had it set at 20. So put the level on there to see, okay, what it actually the angle was. So leveled it off the base for the flat and then put it up there to see, okay, what angle. I was sharpening it at a 30 degree angle. So no wonder it was having a hard time. Like it's still cut through paper and will take hair off your arm and all that kind of stuff. But it was just, it wasn't doing what I thought it was. So I was curious if it was the abrasives, which not the case even slightly. So Went, found where 20 degrees is, and put a little Sharpie mark, just so I have it for a reference for myself, and sharpened a knife. By far, I don't know how I didn't go to this sooner. I wouldn't recommend it as far as a beginner setup, but at the same time, it's like once you get that practice and muscle memory... This makes that process so much smoother. The belts are just a little bit more expensive, but you're also getting, I mean, 18 versus 30 inches, you're getting 12 inches more of actual belt for a dollar. I mean, and that's the super premium belts. So there's things like Trizac belts or Cubitron belts and even ceramic belts. But I mean, these ones were really cheap. I just wanted a set so I could actually do a few sharpenings until I could get the Cubitron ones because they're a little harder to source. But for 13 bucks and three sets of each, so it was uh, three at 320, three at, I believe, 400 if I'm correct, three at 600, three at 800, and three at 1,000. So if anything, they get me a few sharpenings. I'm okay with it. But... Getting that muscle memory with the work sharp was definitely a great learning curve. And then also figuring out how to tweak this to make it do what I needed it to do. If I hadn't had the practice with the work sharp, 
this would have been an astronomical nightmare. So I'm glad I could address a lot of the shortcomings of the workshop, like larger motor, it may move faster, but at the same time, the problem I was having with the workshop was the variable speed was failing. So it would kind of go, go up an RPM, down an RPM, up an RPM, down an RPM, and it, you just couldn't keep a consistent edge. So I corrected that because, okay, I'd just stop and wait for it to level out and go. But this, this is one speed. It's a little fast, mind you, but using super, super, super light pressure, I can do it significantly quicker than the work sharp and no heat buildup. So I am immensely happy with this. And I mean, it just took a little bit more. Like that's a really good setup if you basically just want something that you pick up and sharpen. But for someone like me that doesn't mind adjusting things, making it better, that kind of stuff. I mean, this, when I went to Harbor Freight, it's 60 bucks for the 1x30 sander. And the guy asked me, hey, do you want to pay 10 bucks? And in one year, you get a brand new sharp, well, you get a brand new belt sander. I mean, in all honesty, absolutely. I mean, versus the work sharp, work sharp's 200 bucks for that full setup. This 60 bucks and okay, like if in a year, I just want an upgrade to their newest model. I just take this one in, go get a new model, mount that right to here and get going. But I I won't go back to the workshop. I mean, it was a great progression and I'm glad I have that. I've got different ideas for a bench sharpener, but as far as a mobile sharpener that I can stick in the back of my truck, run on the tailgate, all that kind of stuff, this is for me, unmatchable. And the other thing I did, because, okay, it's a wood base. It's going to start wobbling around, especially you put it in the back of the truck. I had a rubber mat for just general cleaning and that kind of stuff. So I glued that to the bottom of this thing. And I can set that on the tailgate of my truck, and it will not move a muscle. It is so solid, as opposed to the workshop I had mounted to a Milwaukee pack out so that, okay, I could just set it down, but it's still like, if I was to put a little bit of pressure, it would move around. This thing won't move around. It's really, really, really nice. I am very happy with this. It just took a lot of fine tuning and then also having the knowledge that I have to adjust for like the angle guide being incorrect or how to get it horizontal because that, I mean, not necessarily a hard thing, but at the same time, it was more just doing it. Sometimes that's our biggest problem is thinking, well, let, well not even thinking, overthinking and going, hey, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Sometimes it's just better to start moving. So with this, I bought the, I was talking to my buddy and like, yeah, no, I was thinking of buying a, I was at Harbor Freight and was like, yeah, I'm thinking of buying a 1x30 motor and adapting it to the original work sharp. And he was like, yeah, no, give it a shot. And then I started doing a little bit more looking and found, okay, there's an angle guide. I can get a strop, all that kind of stuff. The belts were just a little bit more expensive, but cost per belt was like not measurable. It makes way more sense running the 1x30s. It, I didn't have to do as much work. So this was a no-brainer. Yeah. And all I can say is I'm really happy. I mean, it took a little bit of work, maybe a day or two as far as making the frame and tuning it the way that I wanted to. Like, you have to true up the wheels. I'll show you what they look like, too, just so you can see them. Because that's the biggest problem with, like, the Harbor Freights is typically the wheels don't run very true. So I also stuck a magnet in there too, so that, okay, some of the dust that's going down in there already gets sucked up. It's a nice little addition compared to the work sharp because there wasn't really a good place for me to put a magnet or even a slightly larger magnet. So perfect place for a magnet, get some of the dust, as well as just having the shields keeps me a lot safer. I like it a lot. But back to what I was saying is the wheels aren't necessarily true when you get them. So you basically just take like 
a 120 or 240 grit sandpaper and run it just on belts, being extremely careful, mind you, because like these are going like 40 miles an hour when you're actually thinking about it. But just being careful and lightly running and truing up those wheels and makes a huge difference. And then also making sure, I believe it's called the platinum, is 90 degrees, making sure that everything's level, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot more labor intensive to get it where you want but as long as you've got the skills to be able to adjust it and get it where you want for me this is a no-brainer like I wish I had done this sooner this is just an absolute no-brainer for me but now you guys have seen the new sharpener and tomorrow actually I'm going out and doing a sharpening lady has a bunch of scissors so I'll make sure to get some footage from that but I wanted to show you guys it because, one, I'm extremely happy with it. And two, I mean, if you're somebody that's already used a work, well, use the work sharp with the blade grinder, maybe you're looking for something that can help you and get you going a little bit faster or that could work for you a little bit better. As long as you've got the skills and know what you're doing, the, the rest is just a matter of plug and play. So... I'm glad you guys got to see the new sharpener. Let me know what you think of it. So that wraps things up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and share the video and subscribe. I hope you have an awesome one. Take care.